Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're gonna be talking about what's known as the built-in types. Now, this is pretty simple, but it's important to understand. Before we dive in, I did wanna give a special thank you to monday.com for sponsoring this series. Monday.com is a project management website where you can go organize your work and get things done. They also have a mobile application so you can always work on your projects on the go. It's a great way to log the progress as well as mark any blockers and call out any issues you're having with progress. This will allow you to really key in on what's stopping you from progressing with a project and help you get things done. So check them out. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. It would really help me out. All right, now let's get back into built-in types. So here's the reference page for built-in types. What exactly is a built-in type? Well, it's an alias, and an alias is just another name for something. So some of the types we've seen over here on the left, these are aliases for the types over here on the right meaning you could use either one. So for example, we worked with an integer in the last video. Well, an integer could also be made using int32. So let me show that to you guys. We could say int x is five, but alternatively you could say int32 with a capital I, and that'll work as well. You might see both. So it's important to understand what's going on here. This is part of the system namespace. So if you didn't have this using up here, you would have to prefix this with system dot, and then it'll give you access to the n32. I'm gonna bring that using back, so I'm gonna get rid of that. There we go. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit more. It's important to understand that C Sharp uses the .NET framework. .NET gives us the tools required to build applications. One of these tools is the .NET class library. You can think of this as basically just a collection of code that we can reference and use inside of our programs. This is what gives us access to all of these different data types that they defined. And this is part of the .NET framework, not C Sharp. What this means is that any other languages that use the .NET framework are also going to have these data types. Why is this significant? Well, if we go to a different programming language, such as Visual Basic, that also uses the .NET framework, you're going to see the same data types. So over here is the data type summary for Visual Basic, and you can see a lot of the same data types here where we have the Visual Basic version, as well as the Common Language Runtime version, which is the equivalent of the .NET type over here. So you can see Boolean, Byte, Char, Date, Time, Decimal, Double, and then we have Int32, just like we were using over here, and so forth. So these data types are made accessible to us through the .NET framework, and there are just different names for these things inside of the c -sharp programming language. So you might see int32, you might see int. Either one, it's exactly the same thing. Even down here, we'll have string with a lowercase s, and then we have string with an uppercase s. So a common question is, what is the difference between, let's make a string real quick. What is the difference between string with a lowercase s and string with an uppercase s? The answer is absolutely nothing. The string with the lowercase s is an alias, meaning it's exactly the same thing as using the uppercase version. Even when I hover over it here, you can see system.string with a capital S. This is in contrast to another popular programming language called Java. In Java, you will have data types that are lowercase and uppercase, one of which is a primitive type similar to our simple types here in C Sharp, and then the one with the uppercase is an object wrapped version of that same data type, which since we're not in Java, that's not really significant for us. But if you're coming from a Java background and because C Sharp and Java are really similar, you might be, it's important to understand that uppercase and lowercase does not mean anything inside of C Sharp, but it does mean something inside of Java. For us, all we need to know is that we're gonna be using the lowercase versions here on the left. These are the C Sharp aliases and they coordinate with .NET types over here on the right. All of the ones listed here, except for object and string, are the simple types we talked about in two videos ago. So that's just a side note. Just know that object and string are also part of this list. They're not simple types. But if you're just trying to memorize which ones have aliases, it's all of the simple types plus object and string. That's all I got for you guys on the built-in types. Pretty simple to understand, but vitally important if you're gonna be working with other people's code because you're likely going to see some of the, the .NET version of those aliases at some point in your life. So that's all I got for you guys. Please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this content, and I'll see you in the next video.